And Congresswoman Karen Bass. It's always good to see you, Congresswoman. Good morning. Thank you. Thanks for having me on. So you're hearing all the sides going back and forth, but the one thing that everybody seems to just about agree on is that we're not getting anywhere fast. Lindsey Graham says we're going over the cliff, among others. What do you think? Well, I don't believe that we're going to go over the cliff. I do think that, you know, people are drawing a line in the sand, which I think is a typical part of negotiation, just like your previous speaker sp said. But I think that everybody understands the consequences that the the president has put forward a plan that would reduce taxes or maintain the tax cuts for 98% of the U.S. public. And so I don't believe that my Republican colleagues want to see taxes go up on 100%, but they do need to come to the table and counter the proposal. If they want changes in entitlements, they need to say what those changes are. I know that where we all draw the line in the sand is, is that there's ways to find savings everywhere. However, this is not the time to use the fiscal problem as an excuse excuse to completely break the guarantee that we've had with the American public for decades. Republican John, uh, strategist John Fury said something that I, I think represents the views of a lot of Republicans. He said about the president, he is overreading his mandate by doing the campaign thing. He is making the same mistake Bush made in 2005. And of course, he's talking about when George Social W. Bush Security. tried to restructure Social Security, couldn't broker a deal on the Hill. Is there a chance that the president is overreading the mandate? That we know that the American people agree with him about taxes on the rich, but anything else is fair game? No, I I don't think that there's a comparison between those two at all. What Bush made the mistake of is that the U.S. public does not support ending or privatizing Social Security. There have been poll after poll about raising taxes on the 1% of the uh, U.S. public, the wealthiest. And poll after poll shows that close to 70% of the U.S. public agrees with that. There was no poll that ever showed that the U.S. public agreed with privatizing Social Security. But I think most Americans, and I'm sure you would agree with this, most Americans know that a, a big driver of the deficit and one of the and the biggest expenses we have are entitlements. And, and you've said Grover Norquist's House of Cards may come crumbling down. So I'm wondering if you think the bigger problem here is revenue, or is it Democrats not wanting to give big cuts on entitlements? No, I think the bigger problem is Grover Norquist, if you want to know the truth. And I think he's the bigger problem because he threatens Republicans with primaries. So you had several Several Republicans who expressed that they were willing to moderate their view and that they felt their most important pledge was to the U.S. Constitution and not to Grover Norquist. What did Grover Norquist do? He took their quotes, he called them up, he had conversations with them, and he read them line by line their quote and then essentially threatened them with primaries. He's the problem. I think if Grover Norquist wants to run government, he needs to run for office. Well, but then you have people like Saxby Chambliss who have said or seem to indicate that they were backing away from their pledge and that. And Grover Norquist gets on the phone to them in the last several days, and the reports of the phone calls are that well, suddenly Chambliss is going back a little bit maybe on what he had to say. So, I mean, do you think that his influence has waned? Well, well but see, this is exactly what I'm saying. Is that and, and Chambliss was exactly who I was thinking about. He threatens people. I do think his influence is reigning. I think that there has been a crack in Grover's armor, and that's why he tried to shore it up last week by calling people and intimidating them. But I think it's really time that we hold him to task. He should not be allowed to hold the Republican Party hostage like he is. It's very irresponsible. I do think that there's enough Republicans that are moderate enough that they understand the need to raise revenue. But the question is, will they be able to step forward? The other question is, will John Boehner lead his caucus or will his caucus lead him? And so if John Boehner leads his caucus, then he will be able to identify 100 votes, 120 votes. He he can come over and talk to the Democrats and say, do you have 100 votes, 120 votes that we can put together and get this deal done? So the question for the year is, who runs this place? Is it Grover Norquist? Does John Boehner run the Republican caucus? Or does the Republican caucus run him? And how long will we allow Grover Norquist to hold the U.S. House of Representatives hostage? Congresswoman Karen Bass, it's always good to have you on the show. Thanks so Thank much. You.